Please can I ask you to stand now for the academic procession. Opening prayer. Lord God, we pray in thanksgiving for bringing us safely to this day and for all those who have made this journey possible. Bless those who graduate today. May they know your great love for them and may they seek goodness, beauty, and truth in all that they do. May they use their many gifts wisely and generously and for the greater good of the whole human family. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I invite Mr Ian Barrow, Chair of the Board of Governors, to open the ceremony. Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, members of the academic procession, graduands, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Board of Governors of Leeds Trinity University, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to your graduation. Today's graduation ceremony is an occasion that you and your family and friends will never forget, and rightly so. Your degree represents a significant step forward in your life. It will create opportunities and pathways that may not otherwise have been available to you. You all took a very important step in planning your education and laying the foundations for your career by choosing to study here at Leeds Trinity. By graduating today, you will build on this foundation and create more career opportunities for your work in life. It is now again up to you to take the next step in your career with the same resolve and determination. We hope that you all enjoy your special day and that your memories of your time at Leeds Trinity will inspire you to even greater achievement. With that positive thought, it gives me great pleasure to officially declare the ceremony open. I would like to invite our Vice-Chancellor, Professor Margaret House, to give her welcoming address. Thank you. Pro-Chancellor, Chair of the Board of Governors, distinguished guests, colleagues, head teachers and teachers from our partner schools, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, graduates. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to our 2018 Summer Graduation Ceremony. Today we're here to celebrate the success of all of you graduating from our PGCE secondary programme within the Institute of Childhood and Education. This ceremony officially marks the formal completion of your studies and the beginning of fresh challenges as most of you start your professional teaching careers. What you have achieved should not be underestimated. Intellectually and mentally demanding, studying for a degree requires a great deal of hard work 
perseverance and determination. When all of you started your journey with us, you had chosen a course that would not only change your lives, but also the lives of those that you go on to teach. And although I have no doubt that your, your teacher training and alternative placements were demanding, I hope they were also rewarding, inspiring, and enjoyable. Studying for a professional qualification is a major personal commitment and investment in your future. One of the biggest that you'll probably ever make. It demonstrates confidence and belief in your abilities and future prospects. And following a year of hard work and dedication, you've done it. And today is a day of joy and celebration. And it's my pleasure and honor to celebrate with you. And I know I speak for everyone here this afternoon when I say how proud we are of each and every one of you. But today is also about the people who've supported you throughout your educational journey. Parents, carers, grandparents, aunts, uncles, children, husbands, wives, partners, teachers, and friends. You have all been there for our graduates throughout their entire educational journey, a journey which started long before Leeds Trinity University and one which may continue for some afterwards. Your contribution to their achievement has been invaluable, and I would like to personally thank each and every one of you for always being there for our graduates during their time with us. And I'm delighted to see so many of you here with them today to celebrate in their success. So, graduates, I would like you to join me, if you could stand, turn and face your family and friends, your supporters, and let's show our appreciation. Now that didn't actually sound altogether that grateful. Come on, let's show your appreciation. Thank you. I'm also honored to share the altar with another group of people here today who've played a significant role in your success. These are my colleagues, your lecturers and tutors, and colleagues from our partnership schools who've been there for you throughout your studies, supporting you and providing you with knowledge and inspiration. We must also acknowledge the contribution of our professional and support staff, without whom the delivery of your degree programs, placements, and events like today would quite simply not be possible. I'm incredibly proud of the academic, professional, and support staff at Leeds Trinity University. They work hard to ensure your success, and it's fitting that we show our appreciation for their efforts. Uh, and this time, I'd like the staff on the altar, the staff in the chapel, and also those in the auditorium, if you would stand, and please, graduates, join with me in again showing our appreciation. I'm also very proud of you, our graduates. When we asked your lecturers and tutors to nominate students who had excelled during their time here, we were overwhelmed by the response. There are so many of you that I could speak about. But I'd like to take the opportunity to mention two students whose stories particularly stood out for me. Studying for a degree is challenging, and many of you complete your degrees while managing many other commitments, whether that's work, family, caring responsibilities, or all of the above. And Jessica Ann Robinson is one student who has shown real resilience in juggling many personal responsibilities with the demands of a PGCE. And not only has she finished the course, but she's achieved a grade one profile, something to be very proud of indeed. So well done, Jessica Ann. And Elizabeth Marseille, who has excelled on her course achieving grade ones and distinctions in all of her assessments, will soon have one of her level seven pieces which explores how students make progression in thinking and writing about historical causes published in the Teaching History Journal. 
To have work published in such a prestigious journal reflects the high standard of Elizabeth's work and also the high regard that our graduates are held in. So very well done, Elizabeth. Of course, we're proud of all of you. And as you take your next steps in your career, we are proud to be welcoming you to the next phase of your relationship with us. Leeds Trinity is your university and will be here for you whenever you need us. When you're looking for your next job, if your skills need refreshing, if you're ready for the next academic challenge. You're joining a global community of over 25,000 Leeds Trinity graduates. They, like you, are exceptional individuals, working in all sorts of organisations around the world as teachers, key stage leaders, head teachers, lecturers. And so as you graduate today, your future is bright and your opportunities are limitless. Your degree has provided you with knowledge, professional experiences and highly sought after professional level skills. The vocational focus of your course has given you the best possible opportunity to be ready for the world of work and throughout your time with us, you have become more rounded, more confident individuals and you've hopefully made some friends for life. These life experiences are just as important as the academic qualifications you have achieved. And I'm sure I speak for everyone here when I say that it's been a pleasure to watch you develop and grow into inspiring individuals with bright futures ahead of you. We're also taking the opportunity this week to mark the involvement of a number of individuals who've made a significant contribution to the success of the university over the years by the award of an honorary fellowship. And at this ceremony, I'm very pleased that we are, we are honouring Canon Keith Maidley. So while Lee's Trinity University has developed and grown over the last 50 years, one thing remains constant, our complete commitment to developing highly employable graduates who are able to make a significant and lasting contribution to society. It is why 95% of our graduates from last year were in work or further study six months after graduating. It's why we're the top mainstream university in Yorkshire and in the top 20 nationally for student satisfaction and teaching quality. And it's why we're ranked fourth nationally in the Guardian League table for value added, a rating which compares student degree results with their entry qualifications to show how effectively they are taught at the university. It's why this university exists and why we're so proud of all of you on this special day. So today we celebrate the success of you, our 2018 graduates. Everyone at Leeds Trinity appreciates that life is far from easy for today's students. Learning is a personal challenge and all of you will have faced your own particular challenges and all of you have overcome them. Learning Sorry. Your family and friends will have supported you. Many of you will have worked to pay for your studies. And all of you will have made sacrifices for your success. So please remember this moment and this day. Remember the people that are around you, who have been with you on your journey. And remember the many others who've supported you and contributed to your achievement. Everyone here at Leeds Trinity is immensely proud of you and of your success. Look to the future with optimism and take your talents out to the world. You are all exceptional people. Congratulations and good luck. invite the Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Professor Ray Lloyd, to read the citation for the award of the Fellow of the University. Pro Chancellor, I have the honour to present to you Canon Keith Maidley, MBE, businessman, networker and brand ambassador for Yorkshire. Born in the heart of Yorkshire, Keith was brought up and educated in Bradford. Age 16, he joined British Rail and, on being promoted, went to work in the South East, where he became Britain's youngest station master, age 21. On returning to his beloved Yorkshire in 1976,
Keith co-founded an independent financial services business, which he ran for over 30 years. He quickly established a reputation for his innovative approach and creativity, and the business grew substantially, both in the UK and abroad. And in 2004, when his business partner retired, Keith sold the company to Yorkshire Investment Group. In 2002, Keith took on the role as chair of the Yorkshire Society, a non-political organisation founded in 1980 to encourage people born, working or living in the county of Yorkshire to join together and help improve the lives of people in the county. Soon after his appointment, Keith became known as Mr Yorkshire, proactively promoting unity in the community and encouraging people, businesses and organisations to work together. Through his work with the Yorkshire Society, Keith has engaged with members of diverse cultures across Yorkshire to promote understanding, mutual respect and seek opportunities to engage in various ways. After 16 years of service, Keith stepped down from the role as chair in June 2018 to concentrate on other interests, including Cones Keep Children Safe, a series of children's books written by Keith's wife, Chris, to encourage safety, and his continued passion for connecting business and education. This has always been an interest for Keith. In 2007, he was appointed chair of governors of the David Young Community Academy in Leeds, and from 2009 to 2012, took on a three-year term as regional chair of the Prince's Trust, furthering his interest in the welfare and well-being of young people. In 2014, he founded a new business club, Trinity Club Leeds, which became Unity Club in 2017 and is now based at Leeds Beckett University. Throughout the years, Keith has also continued his work with Leeds Trinity and the Leeds Trinity Business Network. In 2016, Keith was the subject of a TV documentary, Being Mr Yorkshire, produced by three Leeds Trinity students on professional placement, alongside Rick Wakeling, Managing Director at Yorkshire Productions Limited. His strong networking and public speaking skills are used to great effect, allowing him to support a range of community issues and activities and promote all that is great about Yorkshire, its people and its communities. In 2011, Keith was awarded an MBE for services to the communities of Yorkshire. And in 2013, he was installed as an honorary lay canon of Ripon Cathedral for his work at the David Young Community Academy and for service to the business community of Leeds. Keith's unstinting work for the people of Yorkshire, and especially the young people of Yorkshire, make him fully deserving of the award of Honorary Fellow of Leeds Trinity University. We now move to the conferment of the awards for our graduates. I invite Mr. Ed Podesta to present awards from the Institute of Childhood and Education. Pro Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, I'm pleased to present the following graduates who have been awarded a, a, a postgraduate certificate in education with QTS. In Secondary Education, Art and Design, I present Evangeline Ackerson. In Secondary Education, Business Studies, I present Laura Anderson. Emily Canu. In secondary education computer science with ICT, I present Matthew Bishop. Kieran Dodge. Abigail Evans.
and Jason Thompson Ince. In secondary education English, I present Emma Bell. <laughs> Rachel Fraser. <laughs> Lee Holland. Rebecca Leeming. <laughs> Caitlin McKenna. <laughs> Amira Mohammed. Laura Naylor. <laughs> Nicola Oldfield. <laughs> Chloe Patterson. Melissa Scora. <laughs> Bethany Sherburn. <laughs> Marie Claire Smith. Rebecca Stein. <laughs> and Zara Wasim. <laughs> In secondary education geography, I present Lisa Heller. Chloe Mortimer. <laughs> Greg Potter. <laughs> and Jordan Warrior. In secondary education history, I present Ellis Corbishley. <laughs> Gemma Hollingsworth. <laughs> Mark Leonard. The following graduand is also the recipient of the PGCE Secondary Education Provider-Led Prize, Elizabeth Marcy. <laughs> Alexander May. <laughs> Louise Pickett. Jessica Robinson. <laughs> Mohammed Usman. <laughs> In secondary education mathematics, I present 
Elizabeth Adams. <laughs> Lindsay Bates. Amy Cree. Kimberly Durant. Emma Henderson. Abby Holmes. <laughs> Rowan Hunt. <laughs> Jennifer Irwin. Jack Josling. <laughs> Hassam Khalil. <laughs> Danielle Kinder. Danielle Parker. <laughs> Katie Proctor. <laughs> Thomas Prothero. Amber Stamford. Sarah Weymouth. Naya Williams. Craig Anthony Wood. <laughs> and Simon Woodward. In secondary education, modern foreign languages, French with Spanish, I present Rebecca Briscoe. In secondary education, modern foreign languages, French, I present Alexandre Carrier. Sarah Charpentier. <laughs> Megan Coquet. <laughs> Daljin Decor. Sophie Kerr. (laughs) 
Ramesa Rasib. In secondary education, modern foreign languages, German with French, I present Kirsten Woadby Tolly. In secondary education, modern foreign languages, Spanish, I present Lauren Atkinson. Ana Caricio Nunez. Nicola Gibson. Bethany Jenkins. Sophie Sheard. In secondary education music, I present the following graduand, who is also the recipient of the PGCE Secondary Education School Direct Prize, Rebecca Ward. In secondary education, physical education, I present Ricky Badwell. Sarah Dobby. Emma Lansal. In secondary education, religious education, I present Zainab Ali. Uzma Bibi. <laughs> Emily Rose Little. <laughs> Sophie Lund. Jennifer Nichols. <laughs> Kieran Sadiq. <laughs> Samia Saida. In secondary education science with biology, I present Matt Bradbury. <laughs> Natasha Lindup. <laughs> Matthew Livesey. Julie McLeish. <laughs> Craig Malarkey. <laughs> Lisa Sajid.
Natalie Wright. In secondary education science with chemistry, I present Sophia Beebe. Katie Butler. Adam Davis. Emma Gledhill. Anissa Patel. <laughs> Zaira Sadiq. <laughs> Sahira Sikanda. and Lisa White. In secondary education science with physics, I present Rafsali Flores Adrian. Alexander Odenial. The following graduands have been awarded a Professional Graduate Certificate of Education with QTS. In Secondary Education English, I present Sarah Campbell. In Secondary Education Mathematics, I present Natalie Jackson. In secondary education science with chemistry, I present Sam Stevenson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the presentation of awards and prizes from the Institute of Childhood and Education. Chancellor, Mr. John Battle, to give his address. Vice Chancellor, Chair of Governors, ladies and gentlemen, and especially today's graduates, um, it's my privilege just to offer a few words of congratulations, gratitude, and encouragement for the future. Um, yes, today is one of life's milestones when together we publicly recognize the great efforts of commitment and dedication over years of study following, I think, some two decades of educational work, of which you should be rightly proud. It's no mean achievement, and it deserves our sincere congratulations today. And can I say, with the whoops and cheers on both sides of the room, I felt that your achievement here today was a whole community achievement. Congratulations on you all. And first, a word of, of gratitude. Um, your effort will have been achieved with the help of a great crowd of supporters throughout your study years, from parents, loved ones, special friends, but not least our teachers, who I think we should always gratefully acknowledge. Often they will never know the real support 
and influence that they have been on our lives and how that small word of encouragement or challenge can actually be the making of us. And I would say it now falls to you to be that word of encouragement and challenge and inspiration to the next generation. It falls to you. The challenges of today in a troubled and perhaps confusing world, increasingly dominated by new technologies, the development of artificial intelligence, the digital and virtual worlds, the environmental challenges, issues of trade and migration, international inequalities and uneven development, not to mention the need for conflict resolution and peace building. They're all challenges that need all our talents, our skills and our commitment more than ever across a wide range of disciplines that perhaps now should be joined together in new imaginative, creative and complex ways. And in a world that's regarded as sometimes both chaotic and complex, perhaps the real challenge is to discover new joined up ways of working together. Um, I was reminded, uh, as I understand, that the England manager, Gala Southgate, um, is now in great demand as a motivational speaker by industry and business who are invited in by the hour to actually help them to develop real cooperational teamwork in a world of intense competition. But actually last week, I felt it was more significant um, to take note of the teamwork of over a thousand people plus volunteers across languages, skills, experience and engineering, which was demonstrated in the Thailand rescue of the young football team stranded deep in the caving system. Members of the British Cave Rescue Council spoke very humbly on their arrival back here on how careful and coordinated teamwork with shared leadership could work what they called miracles of achievement under incredible pressure. And I think it's that example of cooperation that could prove to be a 21st century and an international model. So the next phase of your lives now, opening up for you, our new Leeds Trinity graduates, into a future of great challenges. And those challenges are especially bequeathed to those who've had the best of education. The responsibility entrusted to you by society now is to go out and contribute to shaping the future world in communities in which you will live and work. And it's not simply a matter of sharing the knowledge and skills you have learned. Perhaps it's the rather larger ethical responsibility developed here at your time at Leeds Trinity to use your whole personal development to work for a better society for all, to participate in building up the common good and creating a world in which resources are better shared and in which all people are treated with dignity, fostering an inclusive society in which, yes, technologies are at the service of all people. Perhaps it's significant that we meet here in the chapel. It's a place of reflection, of context setting, if you like, of renewal of our sense of purpose right at the heart of Leeds Trinity University, a place in which each person is recognised as having a special unique personal vocation to contribute to transforming our world. In October, the bishops of the Catholic Church will actually gather together to discuss the vocation and the contribution of young people. And in his words of invitation to that conference, Pope Francis invited all young people, quote, not to lose the chance to dream big and play your unique part in cooperating in transforming our world. And as one of the few great women doctors of the church, St. Catherine of Siena wrote when she was writing to a troubled young man in those troubled times of the 14th century. She said, if you are who you should be, you will set not just your locality, but your whole world on fire. I think that particularly applies to teachers that inspire us. They may never know what influence they have. And they may never receive the thanks that they are due.
but it falls to you perhaps to move into that world and to lead the future by encouragement, inspiration and challenge. And finally, can I just recommend that perhaps you, you keep in touch, yes, with your friends and peer group, but also with your teachers and the staff here at Leeds Trinity. Let us share your journey, your personal journey from now on, because you will be the ones that are leading and inspiring the next generation. So congratulations, make the most of enjoying today, and all the very best for the future. Tom Prothero, a student of the graduating cohort, to give the vote of thanks. Uh, Pro Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, Chair of Governors, respected le lecturers, fellow graduates, parents, partners, and supporters. It is my greatest honour to stand here today and deliver this vote of thanks, and I would like to thank the Institute of Childhood and Education for this opportunity. When Catherine first asked me to give this speech, my initial thought was, really, you want a maths teacher to give a speech? I spend most of my time telling my students that mathematicians are lazy and to write as little as possible. Uh, but I couldn't be more honoured to be stood here, so thank you, Catherine. I will try and get all my words out in the right order and not rearrange them. And yeah, that was a really bad math joke. <laughs> um, my path into teaching has been a little bit longer and more convoluted than others. I was never one of those kids that always knew I was going to be a teacher. And in a way, that's how I know now that I am meant to be a teacher. I started it out in banking uh, for one of the well-known banks and had dreams of making a boatload of money because that's going to happen now. Um, and then I took a job at a consultancy firm for one of the big four for three years, all while continuing my chosen sport of rowing. I slowly began to realize in my job that my favorite part was when we would get a batch of new graduates in, introducing them to the role, teaching them the ropes, and guiding them all throughout their first year. Uh, and then the spark that really ignited the idea of teaching in my head was one summer when I was asked to run a Learn to Row course for Leeds uh, Rowing Club, taking people who'd never even sat in a boat before and getting them to a standard where they could row decently well uh, within about eight weeks. That wasn't without its challenges. There were lots of wet days when people fell in, but I enjoyed imparting that knowledge uh, and decided to give teaching a go. Um, I'll always remember the moment after the first full lesson I taught. It was to a bottom set year 10 with multiple special education needs and even a Sudanese refugee who couldn't speak a word of English in there. I was absolutely exhausted, but I also loved it. Even though I felt like I could have slept for 12 hours, I wanted to get straight back in there and do it again. And that's the thing with this job. No matter how stressed I've got over the last year, mainly when completing the two master's assignments whilst trying to juggle lesson planning. As soon as I'm in, the in front of a class, I'm in my element and I'm having fun. It's also helped to have an amazing support network around me as well. My course mates and I have a social media group that we use whenever we have a question or need support or even want to uh, celebrate a lesson that went really well. You've always been there to sweeten up a bad day. Then there's the Leeds Trinity team, the tutors, Andrea, Andy, Kathy, Lisa, Helen, Lee, Catherine, Rachel, Alex, Charlotte, Andrew, and of course Ed. And then there's everyone working behind the scenes as well. So student support, the learning hub, the partnerships and placements team, student admin, the library, IT services, and anyone else who I've missed, I apologize, uh, who I know would have bent over backwards to help any of us both this year and next year in our NQTs. And finally, there's our placement schools. I've been exceptionally lucky to have had two completely different placement schools, but with one commonality, and that's the support that the teachers give each other. 
Both of my mentors have strived to help me achieve the best grade possible. Uh, and both departments, as well as my host teachers, have always been there to offer me support and guidance whenever I need them. I think one of the hardest parts of the course, and I'm sure you'll all agree with me, is that one class. That one class we've had, we've all had them, and each of them has been completely different, but is the one we've struggled with the most. Our own personal Moby Dick, if you will. Mine happened to be a bottom set year eight. Um, there were only 10 of them in there, and there were five adults as well. Um, <laughs> there were 10 distinct levels of ability in there that I had to cater for. And when I first met them, all I could think was, how on earth am I going to show any teacher standards other than differentiation in this one? Some of them could only count to 39 and didn't know what came next, so started again at one. Another couldn't handle money, so when they went out with friends, they would always forget anything their parents had given them not to be embarrassed. And then I had the other end of the spectrum as well. So those who could do maths but were lazy or didn't test well, uh, so then ended up in bottom sets. However, the more I worked with them, the more they became my favorite uh, and the more rewarding it was. The one who couldn't count past 40 can now add up any two numbers, get the right answer, and more importantly, know what that number is. Uh, the lazy ones, or the ones that didn't test well, started to get better the more I praised them and coached them through it. And that's how they've become my favorite class throughout this year. Before I go, I just wanted to say a massive congratulations to everyone sat here. Our initial teacher training year is a tough one, and we've all done exceptionally well to get through it. We're now fully fledged teachers. Good luck for the future. I know we will all be outstanding. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, for a great speech. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the ceremony. You are all invited to the reception in the atrium. And now may I please ask you to stand for the academic procession.